Hi, I'm Scout, and this is part of my short series on making a Princess Mononoke urban femme costume out of garbage. And other people do tool demos much better than I ever could, so this is going to be more of a workflow tutorial where I talk about my decision-making process rather than teaching you anything actually useful. In the last video, I stuck some red heels onto a red skateboard helmet, and then spent like a week trying to carve chunks of wood to make the eye and mouth decorations. In this video, I'm going to get the mask to a wearable stage, and then smash a sewing machine with a Princess Mononoke baseball bat. With a blank red helmet, there's this chance that it'll look like I'm just using it because it was convenient, like the right shape and color or something, but I want to make sure people know every material here is completely intentional. So this helmet needs like a sticker or two to make it look obnoxiously mid-90s skater. I've always loved the Girl Skateboard brand logo, but the OG sticker design that I remember from my childhood is like $10 on eBay, so I decided I'd just make a little bootleg using a Xerox and some wheat paste. Sadly, I lost all my footage of applying the sticker to the red helmet, but when life gives you lemons, get drunk on whiskey sour. So I made a whole wheat paste tutorial, which you can view here, where I demo the same bootleg sticker on this other white helmet. Okay, so obviously I need to make some eye holes in this helmet. Although I guess walking into walls probably wouldn't hurt with this thing on, but anyway, I'm gonna use my favorite tool in the world, the coping saw. Which if you don't have yet, you should totally go steal one from your parents. Basically, the blade on a coping saw can be rotated, so that if the frame is getting in the way, you can move it somewhere else. Um, you can also take the blade out completely, so you can shove it down a tiny drill hole like this, reattach it to the saw's frame on the other side, and then start cutting away like mad. Fun shit. I need this to fit on my face real nice, but the old soft padding smelt like head, and I don't want that on my face, so it had to go. Um, I'm replacing it here with mattress foam, because this stuff is really versatile, and I use it all over the place when it comes to puppetry, and it's an especially good consistency for padding masks specifically. The idea here is that if I can get the mask to fit real snug, it'll help keep it from bouncing off my face during performance, because it's going to get pretty heavy and have all this inertia. I'm aiming for it to not be so tight that it cuts off circulation to my brain, but kind of tighter than would be comfortable. I like when masks hold themselves on by clamping around my forehead and my occipital bone, which is that lump at the back of your skull right where your neck starts. Normally for a mask build, I'd be creating a strap or a crown that goes behind my occipital bone, but this helmet's chin strap actually works like a charm if I just clip it behind my head instead of under my chin, so easy. Done. Now for attaching the wood decorations. The wood pieces have already been sanded out to fit the curvature of the helmet, but it's not a perfect fit yet, so I need to fill that gap with something. I was just going to use this wood-colored plumber's epoxy as both filler and glue, but I got a little nervous that the plumber's epoxy wouldn't be able to adhere to the plastic very well because that's not what it's really made for. So first I laid down a layer of this liquid epoxy to bond the wood to the plastic, and then proceeded to mix up the plumber's epoxy to fill the rest of the gap. Plumber's epoxy is really expensive if you were to compare it to, like, clay, but in small amounts it's kind of miraculous to work with. Um, you only get a few minutes before it sets up, but you can really sculpt it like clay, and it will hold its shape perfectly, unlike, say, a gummy water-based putty. I'm using dental tools, and I'm dipping them in water, because having water on your tools keeps the putty from grabbing onto them, and you can get this real nice smooth surface with this epoxy using water like that. In the last video, you saw me magically transform an everyday switchblade into a cosplay prop, just using a dab of sign painter's enamel. And I wanted to do something just as cool for San's other weapon, the spear, that would be all like modern urban warrior girl and not just some horribly anachronistic mock spear or something. Even though taping sewing shears to a curtain rod is something I would totally do in real life, I'm sensing baseball bats are what's in this year. Now, a bat doesn't have sections like a spear, so I settled on just painting the color onto the bat, and I'm just hoping that it looks cool enough to distract from that it doesn't actually look anything like a spear. Having such a quintessentially Mononoke red triangle symbol thing to use is a huge help. I'm using the same sign painter's enamel that I used on the knife, because I do plan on fucking this thing up good, and I don't want the paint to flake or anything. I wanted sports tape for the base of the head, but apparently that shit is really expensive. Um, I did have all this medical tape around that I used for tucking, so I used that. Um, speaking of tucking, I still totally mean to make an illustrated scout splains on that topic, because we all know that you want to know. Anyway, I went through all the trouble of dyeing the tape with marker ink, but the material looked all thin and meek, and this baseball bat should be anything but meek, so I ripped it all off. Instead, I soaked a rag t-shirt with acrylic paint, which was a fun bloody mess, and then cut a ribbon out of that. Um, this turned out thicker and more beautiful than I thought it would, actually, mostly because of the shirt's thick cover seam at the bottom. The glue I'm using here is just rubber cement, because the wrap holds itself on pretty good by itself, and I just need a little bit of tack. Rubber cement smells pretty good, too. Now, as with everything I do, I can't just have a nice clean baseball bat with fancy fresh paint. This shit needs to be distressed, which is a fancy costume crafts term for fucked up. And why distress something with a hammer and sandpaper and stuff, when you can do it authentically with actual violence. Not to say that I'm flailing randomly here by any means. I've carefully selected a few different objects that I think will make nice marks, including a gas tank, a steel body sewing machine, a chunk of wood, and a crowbar. 
The sewing machine turned out to be especially awesome because it had all of these different things sticking out of it that made a really good variety of divots on the back. My ethic for distressing props is that the marks should evoke an emotional, sympathetic reaction. Like, you can imagine the hell that the object went through while not being able to tell that it was actually done in a controlled fashion in a workshop. It's a truly fine art. Here's how all that turned out. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful, or at least marginally entertaining. Um, in the next video, you can look forward to a pair of earrings that actually ring, made out of hammered tin cans. And if this video series is useful, or you just think that I'm swell, you can subscribe to my Patreon here. Uh, and those subscriptions are what have enabled me to become a full-time artist, so I am very grateful for your help. Oh, and I blew out that bat because I got carried away at some point, but hey, wood glue and clamps to the rescue!